Hello, today I want to talk about lightning again. Um, I made a couple mistakes in the previous video and I want to correct them today. Um, so go ahead and watch the first video if you haven't already, if you're interested in lightning mechanics and that sort of stuff. Uh, you may skip to a later point in the video if you just want to cut to the chase and see how to actually, uh, what's the best way to make a lightning creeper farm. Uh, but if you want to stick around and listen to the details, uh, yeah, I suggest watching the first video if you haven't already. For the rest of the video, I'll be assuming that you've already watched it. And uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it. So first of all, uh, like I said, I made uh, two mistakes in the last video uh, from reading the code. And in my defense, I read the code at 4 a.m. after waking up uh, and not being able to go back to sleep. I was very tired and I, I was prone to making some mistakes. And uh, yeah, I went back to the code later and checked and yeah, it was pretty obvious. So the first mistake I made was, um, I said in the last video, or in the first video, I said um, that it, the bounding box that it checks around the random X and Z uh, area that, that it selects um, is going to be between the lowest block that rain can reach in that vertical column and the lowest block where there's full skylight access and expand that by three so that makes for Usually 7x7x7, seven by seven by seven. sometimes it's more than 7 tall uh, if the lowest block rain can reach and the lowest block skylight axes can reach are not the same, for example with glass or cobwebs. Um, however, I misread the code here and I thought it said, uh, there's a function call, I thought that it was get height map. Height map is the thing that basically stores the skylight access. No, instead it actually read get height, which is just a simple little function that always returns 256, which is the actual world height. Yeah, pretty embarrassing. Uh, but anyway, it just so you know, it checks from the uh, from the lowest block rain can reach in the random x and z vertical column that was selected, three blocks out in x and z in all x and z directions, three blocks down, and all the way up to the to the build limit. The second mistake I made was I forgot a pretty important logical ch test, or, well, I did actually read this, but I forgot, uh, I, I just completely forgot about it somehow. Um, but there's another logical, logical test that actually happens after a position for the lightning is selected through either the entity method or just the default method, uh, if no entities are found. Uh, but either way, it checks again that, uh, well, it, it does actually a few checks that it's not a snowy biome and the temperature is uh, like high enough and that it's a biome that can actually rain in, so not desert or, or the nether. And uh, yeah, but one of the most important things that it actually checks is, except for the skylight axis, it also checks the, uh, the rain axis, let's call it. It also checks that uh, wherever the the selected location was, so in this case the selected location of the entity, it checks that that location can see full rain access. So yeah, that's what I missed. Now there's a guy called Nazim Nazmus. He made a very nice video about lightning and I very much enjoyed that video. I will highly recommend you go and watch it. It's going to be in the video description along with my first video. And in that video, he showed basically one thing that completely uh, got me confused because I didn't remember this little fact. He showed that creepers standing on pressure plates will actually prevent lightning from spawning in the area around them. Now, I actually missed two details about this. First of all, I missed the fact that uh, that creepers or that entities in general check the uh, the rain axis as well as the skylight axis. And most blocks in the game, actually, you'd be surprised, but most blocks in the game, including ones you'd expect rain to go through, like pressure plates, rails, that kind of stuff, rain doesn't actually go through. I'd expect even fences and that kind of stuff, but no, rain doesn't go through most, like almost all of the blocks in the game. There's basically, it goes through air, cobwebs, string, and I think that may be it. Maybe vines or something like that. I don't, I don't even know. Uh, actually, probably not vines. Anyway, rain doesn't go through most of the blocks in the game. So assume if there's any blocks above the creeper or above the entity, it's not actually uh, gonna select the lightning. But the differences between skylight access between the skylight access check and the rain check is that 
Um, with the Skylight Access check, if it doesn't see full Skylight Access, it won't get added to the list, and then it'll just um, generate the lightning at the actual original location. If, however, an entity is found that does see Skylight Access, but that doesn't see uh, Rain Access, then it's actually going to cancel the lightning bolt. Yeah. So, again, go ahead and go watch Nasmus' video. It's very good. Uh, and now I'll be moving on to the next part in this video. So now I want to talk with you guys a little bit more about statistics, and then we'll finally get to uh, some design that I have. So first of all, uh, let's recap. There is a 1 in 100,000 chance per tick per chunk of lightning generating. There are 72,000 ticks per hour, assuming 20 TPS. And one thing I didn't actually mention in the last video is the statistical amount of thunder that exists in any given amount of time in a world. So basically, rain and thunder have two separate timers that are completely independent of each other, uh, that are stored with the world, with the world save, and that are constantly running, and uh, they have they both have the same uh, the same timings. It selects a random amount between three and thirteen minutes of being on. So once rain should start or once thunder should start, it uh, randomly selects between three to thirteen minutes of actually existing. And then once it finishes, it selects a random amount between ten and one hundred and forty minutes of uh, not raining or thundering appropriately. Now this means that there's about nine percent, nine point six percent of the time it's raining, and 9.6% of the time it's thundering. But this isn't exactly true. In reality, uh, what the game actually checks is in order for rain to occur, only the rain timer needs to be on. However, for thunder to occur, both timers need to be on. Since they're completely statistically independent of each other, that means that thunder actually only exists for just under 1% of the time, about 0.93% of the time. Uh, which is basically the square of 9.6%. And yeah, that's not a lot of time. That's about 32.5 seconds per hour. So finally, the last thing is one creeper, which covers a 7x7 seven seven area of blocks. Um, one creeper covers 49 out of 256 vertical columns in a chunk. Um, and if you, like I'd, I've done a little bit of thinking on this matter, but it doesn't really matter how you lay out your creepers. Like even if you put two creepers uh, in the same seven by seven area, you're not gaining anything because uh, basically to test the efficiency of the farm, you want to measure the ratio between the output to the input. The higher that ratio is, the better. Now with and and of course you're limited by the amount of input you have because you know if you have several hundred uh, creepers, basically entities with AI existing in your world in your loaded chunks uh, and within distance of the player, even without distance of the player, they're going to lag up your both your client and your server by a lot. So yeah, you're kind of limited on your input and so you want to maximize the amount of output you get uh, per input and basically putting more creepers within the same area or really any any layout you can think of is only going to produce a smaller than or equal to uh, ratio between the output and the input to some constant number that we're going to attempt to calculate right now. The main difference is and the main reason you should actually spread your creepers out instead of uh, doubling them up for example is because uh, spreading them out has less risk. Sure you'll you'll get less creepers per lightning strike that successfully hits but you will statistically get more lightning strikes that hit so anyway let's get straight to it so with all these uh, statistics with all the, this information we can calculate the amount of uh, the number of charged creepers we get per hour and that's 72,000 uh, times 43 times 0.0093 percent of the time that it's thundering uh, times the amount of creepers that we uh, that we input into our farm, basically the amount of creepers that we have in our farm, and we divide that whole thing by 100,000 times 256 blocks in a chunk, and we get this very nice ratio right here. So you can see it's very easy if you just divide by by C, by the amount of creepers that you put into your farm. The ratio between output to input is this very, very tiny number right over here, 0 0.00128. 
that is a tiny number. This means that in order to get one charged creeper per hour on average on your farm, you need 800 creepers. Yeah, that's a lot. It's probably something you don't want to do. I think on the Sidecraft server we might settle for anywhere between 200 to 400 creepers. Uh, we haven't really discussed that yet. But, yeah. Half a, half a creeper per hour on average, uh, or even less, is probably going to have to do because, well, actually our TPS is, is lower than 20, so it's even going to be less. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you don't expect this farm to actually produce a lot. There's there's really nothing you can do about that. And the only thing you can really do is try to make it the most efficient and the most risk-free that you can. And, uh, yeah, so that's what you got to do. Uh, in about 10 hours of AFK using, uh, using, say, 400 creepers, you should get anywhere between... Well, statistically, you should get five charged creepers, but... Since it's such small numbers, you should get much of a higher deviation. So it could be anywhere between, I don't know, between 0 to 10 charged creepers within 10 hours. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, I will quickly show you guys here uh, the very nice design that we have uh, that a few of the guys on the Psychraft server came up with, along with myself. Basically, the creeper sits here, and an armor stand sits right up here. An armor stand is a living entity. Another fun fact about an armor stand is that it's the only living entity that does not take damage directly from the lightning strike, and it also does not take damage directly from the fire block. It does take damage from being set on fire, but if it's sitting in water, even if it's within the fire block itself, it's not going to take damage. Most entities, even if they're standing half in water, half in fire, will take damage just by sitting in the fire block itself. And any other entity will take uh, will take lightning damage upon upon impact. Basically, uh, lightning deals two and a half hearts of damage or five hit points of damage and sets the mob on fire. But it doesn't do that for an armor stand that's partially subdued in water. Now this armor stand's hitbox is mostly outside of the water, it's mostly on this block, that's why the lightning will actually generate on this block, setting this block on fire, it has to be, uh, well, a, a solid block, not, not a glass block, for example. Uh, a glass, uh, a block that can be set on fire, and that'll just trigger this uh, bud block update detector, which will release this piston, which will drop the creeper. Now you'll notice that this creeper is uh, located exactly three blocks underneath the armor stand, uh, and since the lightning is actually going to strike the armor stand and never the creeper because it doesn't have skylight access or rain access, um, it will never strike the creeper. And so uh, since the creeper is exactly three blocks underneath where the lightning strikes, and if you'll remember from right over there at the very end, lightning affects entities or strikes entities that are up to three blocks beneath them, seven by seven area, of course. He's directly beneath where the lightning would strike, three blocks beneath it. If he was even a little bit lower, he wouldn't get struck by the lightning. And basically, uh, I think I mentioned this in, in my last video, I don't really remember, but uh, lightning has a certain chance to kill off the creeper, even if you ignore the fire damage that it deals to them. Um, and that's basically because, uh, and I think I did mention this, lightning randomly lives for uh, between 3 to 22 ticks. And it has an update tick every other tick. And um, just in case you didn't know, entities cannot take damage cannot take damage from more than one source within five gain ticks of difference. There's some tag called hurt by time step that prevents that. Uh, basically, it takes five ticks between uh, between damages that an entity can take. Because of this, in order to take uh, all, all, this, all of his health of damage, which is 10 hearts, he would have to take 4 amounts of damage from the lightning, which would mean that the lightning would have to live for at least 20 ticks. And as I said, that's slightly possible. So it's actually roughly, I think, a 20% chance that the creeper will die directly from the lightning. And it's slightly higher than that because he can die directly from the fire after the lightning damage, even if he only takes 3 ticks of damage directly from the lightning. Uh, and basically, as I said, we want the highest amount of insurance on our creepers because the production rates of this farm are going to be so low anyway that we can't really afford to let a creeper die to the lightning. 
So this instantly, once the lightning strikes, or as instant as can be, it gets rid of the creeper, basically drops him out of range, drops him straight into water so he gets put out, no unnecessary fire damage. He can take at most three hearts of damage, one fire tick of damage basically, and he will never die from the lightning or the fire. This is probably the best design. I don't see much room for improvement here. It's basically uh, the armor stand never dies. You just got to refill the creeper each time. and Otherwise, it's very, very convenient. The creeper never dies. It's very reliable. Yeah, I highly suggest using this design. Um, also, it's all contained. It doesn't interfere with the lightning generation or anything like that. Um, Oh yeah, and also one last thing. Since this, uh, since this actually checks for entities all the way up to the to the uh, uh, world height, then you don't actually need the seven x seven platform next to the creeper or the armor stand. Now I guess uh, actually you can just ignore that and let the lightning hit uh, or the rain hit all the way down below, and then it'll check for entities all the way up above. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't actually hurt the performance because it checks the entire chunk anyway. So anyway, long story short, this guy is going to get struck by lightning. Let's just take a look at that right now. There you go. You see this creeper is almost instantly dropped out uh, without taking almost any damage. Uh, this fire, once it goes out, will actually update this again, but it really doesn't matter because this is obviously mostly a one-time use thing, or at least one-time use at a time. So let's just put another creeper here, take another look, let's uh, focus on the creeper more this time. Yep, very, very nice. Um, and an armor stand has one heart of health, two hit points, so if you were taking damage here, he would have been dead a long time ago. So you can see this armor stand is never going to die, it's it's a very nice trick actually. Uh, so to build this, you just want to make sure that the water doesn't prevent the fire from generating it doesn't flow here this is gonna get block updates so you can't uh, like do something like this and then and then I don't know block it off or something you can't do that you have to leave it because it's gonna get an update from the fire and then redstone is obviously very very simple you can completely encase the creeper in here if you want it doesn't really matter how you do this and this water channel will just go out to wherever you want your collection to be and yeah this is the design you probably want to be using uh, I guess one last note is in order to place the armor stand between the blocks what you want to do is place three blocks above like this place a piston armor stand and a fence you can actually get rid of these two you want to power the piston sometimes this glitch happens uh, get rid of these blocks you can get rid of the fence and there you go let's just quickly take a look at the hitbox of the armor stand you can see this will always work He's partially subdued in the water, so he won't take any fire damage. And he his center of his hitbox is above this block, so that's where the lightning is going to generate. So I hope this video and the previous one together have been informative for you. I hope they're going to help you to build better lightning creeper farms in your world. And uh, I hope you enjoyed most of all. Until next time, bye-bye.